Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development with us. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And uh, Noah, great case study here. We don't always get these uh, nice DC field inductance uh, and an aluminum mill coil motor. Not often. In fact, they say DC is a going out uh, technology, but there's a lot of people argue with that. And this is a great case study. Yeah, the ones that remain are highly critical. Very critical. So we haven't been able to replace those yet. And they're very critical, especially to this operation. Uh, just a little bit about the actual size of this motor. It's a pretty large one, as you can see here, uh, 750 horsepower. Yes, that's not a small motor. Anytime you're dealing with steel and aluminum and DC, uh, these are motors that take very large trucks to move around. Not only is it 750 horsepower, but they also run it at 130% of 750 horsepower. So they're really getting their full money worth. That out is of a hardworking motor. motor. <laughs> that's a hardworking motor. Uh, so a little bit more about the uh, issues that they're having. Uh, it takes aluminum coil, 50,000 pounds, and goes through an unwinding and then a rewinding process. Mm. And like we had said, it's 750, but it was really manufactured for 600 horsepower. So what, what happened there when, how can you go ahead and rename plate a, a motor? So to do that successfully, you have to recognize that the higher horsepower demand is going to increase higher temperatures. We always say the biggest killer of motors is heat, and this is one example. So with the increase in heat, driven by the higher torque demands, they have to redesign it to get rid of that heat. Right, So, and, and then like we mentioned earlier, they're 30% above that, so really they're running a 600 horsepower motor at 900 horsepower almost. It's risky. It's very risky, but they did install a totally enclosed water air cooler. Should that help? Makes a lot of sense. They're not just moving more air. Like a lot of people will just put an extra fan, flip the fan around, put more more airflow. They're actually, you know, actually applying cooling water to further increase the temperature removal. Problem is that last bullet kind of speaks for what's going on here. When motors are only lasting three years. Yeah, that's not that's not by design for sure. Especially these style of motors, which are very expensive. Uh, you know, Noah, we, we've talked about this at many times as to the, some of the value, the three steps, the quality assurance, but number two on that is trending. And can you explain the value of trending? But well, we always say trend is your friend. And the idea behind that is to see something coming before it's too bad, right before it becomes severe. Um, you know, and this is a beautiful example of test over test. You know, they were introduced to a caution level followed by severe, able to make and take action before it's catastrophic. Yeah, it, and then they were testing it pretty much every couple weeks to, uh, to catch this because they knew they were having issues with this motor. And so when it gets down to about half of the turns, that's a big deal. That is a huge drop in inductance and obviously going to affect the operation of the motor. Yes. And so here's a graphical representation of it. But the nice thing, what it is, what it helped them to do is say, okay, now we can do, they did a, a drop test on these field coils just to confirm it. Right. An AC drop test, a great test. We always recommend it, but it's very intrusive. A lot of time, a lot of, a lot of times you're bringing third party uh, service companies in to get it done. Still a good idea, but the, the simple training of inductance is an easy external act, uh, uh, test. And as a result, you're using a, a very non-intrusive test to give you way heads up before you consider the intrusiveness of an AC drop test. Right, and so if you look at that, they had three years of testing. Think of if they had to do an, an AC drop test every two weeks. That is a major, major deal. Right. So we talked about the loss of inductance, and we don't always go into why that, but could you explain this equation a little? What what is what matters in this equation the most when we look at it? So we and this is a great equation. We always focus on the two, like you mentioned, primary variables of change, and that's the number of turns, which can be manufactured in or out, uh, and then the permeability are the two areas that we feel have the biggest, most likely variability in the inductance of these motors. So when we're talking about a DC, we're really probably not worried too much about permeability, so we can really laser focus in on the number of turns. Correct? Absolutely. Now they did, here's an interesting thing, and we say this all the time when you're out in the field and you have a, a megometer with you, 
there's more to this. Oh my gosh, I, I I go back to the good old days on the submarine. It wasn't yellow, but it was a submarine, and it was and this is the tool that we had a magometer basically, uh, and and it it was a great tool, and we still want to get that insulation test in, but it often is a later indicator of problem, and 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 this looks great, right? I mean, so the the ground wall, uh, this fault that they were experiencing had not gone to ground yet, and as a result. Uh, they weren't going to see it. So if you were just sent out there like I was on a carrier to go check, check test an asset and you saw a 44 gig ohm resistance to ground, you're like, oh, the motor's fine. We're going to check it off. Say good to go. Good to go. There's some other reason. It's got to be mechanical. Got to right? be mechanical. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we would always say. Always say that first. <laughs> uh, so here you have it. With They pulled it out because they said, okay, we've confirmed it with drop testing. Now let's take some pictures. And when they did, they, you can see some of the extensive heating going on here. Oh, yeah. This is a, this is a, you know approaching a, a very, very big issue. I would think, again, like operations would start to be affected. And, it's again, this is a situation where it did not go to ground, uh, and they had no indication of the ground. And if you look at the left-hand coil here, this is their – where their RTD was, and it wasn't going off, so it was on the side of the coil. Yeah, this is often, this is like an after factory type of, of, of application. There's other ways of getting that done. Uh, this is probably going to be a lagging indicator as well. So you can see a little closer view of this, the excess heating that was occurring in here, probably lo loss of turns deeper in the coil. You don't necessarily see it on these end, on these end turns here. So as a result of what they found, they decided to implement a couple of engineering changes and cost savings. The motor itself, if it had failed, it's about $20,000 in profits per hour. Now, if that's down for 10 hours, that's... It takes a long time to move one of these big motors out of there, too. Now, the original insulation was Class F, or 155 degrees Celsius maximum. They enhanced that to a... a 260 plus Celsius it can handle. That's so, extreme high. Yeah. So that's one area of uh, enhancement for this motor. They also changed the gauge size. Now, how will that affect your readings moving forward? So the larger wire gauge handles more current, right? Larger uh, circular mills, basically. Uh, but it also, and just like the equation we pointed out, it will uh, affect the number of turns to, to deliver the same inductance or the magnetic qualities, and so expect a change in inductance. Right. And then they, they took the uh, RTG... RTD, excuse me, or the resistance uh, to, de to determine temperature, and they placed it deeper in the coil. Absolutely. You can look at this and say it's a successful effort where they're using the, the MC Max technology uh, for future design reliability. And as always, we'd like to thank you for joining us. Uh, and if you have any type of uh, case studies that you want to share with your peers out there, we've been more than happy to take a look at that. Uh, or tip of the week, we're always looking for that. We can post that on our website. Uh, if you want to visit us, we're at www.pdma.com or give us a call. We'd be happy to hear from you. And until we get another case study to share with you, we want you guys to stay safe. And it's Memorial Day weekend. It so. Is. Big plans. Big plans. I understand you have a big cookout party. Uh, burgers or anything good? All or? the above. Ribs, oh, burgers, ribs, a whole bit. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I wish I lived on your block. <laughs> Maybe a little cornhole tournament. <laughs> oh, cornhole. Oh, I'll give you the trophies that are in my office right now. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much, and uh, we hope you have a great day.